Ladies and gents, welcome to a great evening. If you're looking for a world of gumshoes, wise guys, gorgeous dames, and dirty rats, kick back and enjoy. Welcome to Full Moon Matinee. Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, the detective, conducting investigations into the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Tonight's picture is from 1956, Please Murder Me, starring Angela Lansbury and Raymond Burr, and is directed by Peter Godfrey. It's the story of a woman who murders her husband and is defended at trial by her attorney and lover, who was her husband's best friend. He gets her acquitted of the charge, so he wins the case, but later finds out that she really did commit the crime. And that's where everyone's world starts to unravel. Now, Angela Lansbury we know her and remember her from her hit TV series, Murder, She Wrote, which aired on CBS from 1984 to 1996. In it, she plays the role of Jessica Fletcher, who is a, an older mystery writer who inevitably becomes something of an amateur detective by the time she ends up becoming involved in murder cases. Uh, it was a hit program. Uh, it, it, it was rated in the top 15 TV shows in its first 11 of 12 seasons. Now, that's where many of us remember her and know her the best. But tonight's picture is something, uh, it's fun to see her um, back, you know, 30, 40 years ago when she was in a much younger day and still playing a role of a femme fatale in the film noir movies of the 40s and 50s. So, from 1956, please murder me. Let's roll the picture.
Ray Willis, District. Dear Ray, in exactly 55 minutes, I will be dead. Murdered. First of all, let me explain. I find myself completely sober, reasonably sane, and not at all surprised. It started back in World War II, during the Iwo Jima campaign. I was a captain in the Marine Corps. As you know, every captain needs a top sergeant. Well, I really had the best. His name was Joe Leeds. Hitting the Iwo Beachhead was, was like running into a living hell. I guess I got a little careless. In saving my life, Joe was hit. He carried a bullet so close to his lung, surgery was impossible. During the time the medics patched us up, we became great friends. After the war, I watched him build a home. I watched him become successful. We were closer than, than most brothers. One afternoon, six months ago, I sent for Joe. I knew I was going to break his heart. And all I could think about was whether... It wouldn't have been better for both of us if he had allowed me to die on that beach that day. You know, Craig, you're the only guy in town that could get me out this time of day. But I was coming over to see you anyway. Oh? Yeah. There's a new housing development going up over at Piedmont. What do you think about buying a corner lot and picking up a new market? Might be an idea. What's the matter with you, boy? You look like you had a problem that was too heavy to carry. It almost is, Joe. Well, after all, we've been through it. Can't be too serious. Maybe talking it out will help. It's going to mean throwing 15 years of friendship right out the window. Well, if it's a real friendship, it won't bend easy. Okay. Are you happy being married to Myra? And Joe, don't tell me it's none of my business. Oh, I don't know. Happy is a word that means a lot of things. It's a state of being. I never ask myself. Well, I got a beautiful wife, a lovely home, good business. Guy can't expect me. I, I guess being grateful is as good as being happy. Not really, Joe. Perhaps you haven't realized how little time you've been spending at home. How many evenings you've given to the business. Myra is a fine woman, Joe. When she married you, she was in love. But no one wants to be alone all the time. Now she'd like to do something about it. Oh, I see. She told you to talk to me. Did she ask you to represent her, too? It was more my idea than hers. I don't follow you. I don't know how to say it without making it sound cheap. People meet with no thought of being anything but friends. Circumstances throw them together. Then they discover in each other many mutual interests. They begin to anticipate their next meeting. And then the next one. Until finally, one day, they, they both realize they're very much in love. Okay, don't dress it up. Who's the guy? I'm in love with her, Joe. I want to marry her. That's the way it is. And it's the most difficult thing I've ever had to say to anyone. Are you sure, Craig? Are you sure you know what you're doing? I'm in love with her, Joe. What do you want me to do? I... Like Myra to go away, get a divorce. You know, Craig, I've always had a lot of respect and admiration for you. Leveling with me like this has taken a lot of guts. Like I said, a real friendship doesn't bend easy. This, this kind of knocked the wind out of me. I. 
Give me a couple of days of kicking around, will you? If you just have patience, everything usually works out fine. Sometimes, Lou. Sometimes. Look, do me a favor. Will you mail us on your way home? Yeah, sure thing. something I want to talk to you about. I'll be there in about 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, just remember, Joe, everything usually works out. Quit living in a dream world, Lou.
Right. Try for us to take over? Sure, chalk him off, dust the place good, and McMillan's already photographed most of the road. What does it look like, Lieutenant? According to the lady, we got a breeze. She said she shot her husband in self-defense. <laughs> How come everybody always shoots everybody else in self-defense? Now, Mrs. Lees, I, uh, I think we got everything pretty well straightened out. Would you mind going over that first part for me just once more? Well, I... I was sitting in bed reading when Joe came in. He was wet. He looked furious. I, I couldn't imagine what was wrong. He just walked over and pulled me out of bed as if he was drunk or, or crazy or something. Threw me against the dresser. Said he was going to kill me. He started for me again. Then I opened the drawer and took out the gun and shot him. He just stood there and looked at me. Then he fell. It was terrible. It's going to be all right. You just rest there for a minute. All right, let's get off the phone. You know this place is off limits until the lab's through with it. We dust it before you use it, Lieutenant. Right. And Ellen, I want those papers drawn up first thing in the morning. Now, I'll be there before you. I'm going directly to the office and police headquarters. Sergeant, I want this section of the room covered from A to Z. Several shots of that nightstand and this dresser here. Get in close. You know the kind of stuff I want. Well, cover the place like here. Planning on a big day in court? The guys did. That makes it a big day in court. Any reason to doubt it was self-defense? Enough to hold her on suspicion of murder. Then it's up to you legal eagles to pick her apart. Oh, incidentally, if you want to talk to your client, have at it, because I'm taking her downtown in about two minutes. I don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. What don't you understand? The police. All these questions. Those men in there taking pictures, fingerprints. I'm afraid, Craig. Just routine, Myra. Nothing to be alarmed about. But Lieutenant Bradley's questions haven't been routine. They don't believe me, do they? Tell me the truth. Lieutenant Bradley plans to hold you on suspicion of murder. What am I going to do? How can I make them believe? That'll be my job, darling. Why did he try to kill me? Why couldn't he understand? Myra. I love Joe as much as anyone could. And I thought I knew him. But Joe's actions weren't caused by sudden anger. He had several days to think about what he was going to do. Had he been successful, it would have been premeditated murder. I'm afraid, Craig. Don't be. I know it's going to be difficult for you. Just remember. I love you. I still mean it. Moonlight was invented just for you. Lady Desk. Ray, here's your lead line. District Attorney asked for Myra Leeds' life. He says he'll prove she killed Joe Leeds in cold blood. I think we'd get a new twist to the story if we quoted Carlson. He claims it was an attack of violence, carefully staged and executed. I tell you, no other woman could interest me anymore. Yeah, it's going to be a beaut. This gal's good copy. If Willis was bugging anybody besides Carlson, I think this Lee's woman wouldn't have a prayer. Uh, court's back in session. I'll call rewrite in time for the three-star edition. Right. Oh, that was just the guy. Yeah, court's back in session again. No, I don't have to be in there. You can't take pictures in the courtroom. You were the first officer to report at the scene of the murder. 
Yes, sir. My partner and I were cruising that area when we got the call. Will you please tell the jury exactly what you found? Well, Mrs. Leeds and Mr. Carlson were there when we arrived. Mr. Carlson said Mrs. Leeds had called him, and as soon as he got there, he called the police. Were there signs of struggle? No, sir. Mrs. Leeds wasn't marked or bruised in any way? Not that I could tell. Did you see anything about her clothing or her person or anything at all that indicated that there had been a struggle? No, sir. Thank you. That's all. Mr. Carlson? No question. Sergeant Hill, you are connected with the crime lab. That's right. And did you note that it was raining the night of the murder? Yes, sir. Would you please tell the court how that affected your findings? May I have that picture, please? This dark spot was one of the first things we checked out. It's water. Probably came from Joe Lee's clothing. From the way we can piece it together, he stood right there and didn't make a move until he fell from the shot. In other words, your deduction is that there could not have been a struggle. I object. This question calls for a conclusion of the witness. Sustain. Did you find any water spots anyplace else in the room? No, sir. Thank you. Sergeant Hill, what makes you so certain Joe Leeds did not move closer to Mrs. Leeds than the area of the water stain? To wet a wool rug through that way would require quite a concentration of water. That means the victim would have to stand the spell. But Mrs. Leeds said that he came right in and over to her. Just answer the question, Sergeant. The prosecuting attorney is well able to argue his case. Sorry. Right. What about some of the other people in that room? They could have dripped water on that rug, could they not? We checked that out. The rain had stopped by the time the first police unit had arrived. But it hadn't stopped when I arrived. Couldn't I have stood in one spot long enough to dampen that rug? I guess you could have. Thank you, that's all. And then she stated that he knocked her against the dresser. It was then that she opened the drawer, took out the gun, and shot him. Ms. Lee said the gun was in the dresser drawer. Yes, sir. Did she point out where Mr. Leeds was at the time she shot him? She said that he was rushing toward her from where they had struggled beside the bed. Specifically, where by the bed? On the left side, where Mrs. Leeds was lying. Did your investigation bear to the conclusion? No, sir. Please explain why. Bottles on the dresser, you know, perfume and the like. And had he knocked her against the dresser, well, surely some of these bottles would have been overturned. Lieutenant Bradley, is this one of the photographs you ordered taken? Yes, sir, it is. Now, do you see anything, anything at all disturbed on or about that dresser? No, sir, nothing. Go on, Lieutenant. Well, uh, according to Mrs. Leeds, the spot where Mr. Leeds was standing uh, at the time she shot him was about 10 feet from where he fell. Wasn't that possible? No, sir. According to the coroner's report, the victim was shot through the heart and died instantly. In other words, Joe Leeds would have had to walk ten feet after he was dead. That's about it, sir. Your witness. Lieutenant Bradley, how many years have you been on the police force? Twenty-two. And during that time, would you say you witnessed a number of people suffering from hysteria? I say so, yes. And what would you say were the first signs of hysteria? Oh, uh, incoherency, unable to make a decision, sort of a lapse in common sense. And would you say it was likely for a woman who just killed a man to be suffering from hysteria? Why, yes. And would it not be within the realm of possibility for this woman to mistake her left from her right? Come to a snap judgment of distance and direction that would be entirely incorrect. What? 
possibility. And wouldn't it be possible for a woman in such a state of hysteria to think she was thrown against a dresser when in reality she was thrown against a nearby wall? Well, she could be, but... That is all. Thank you. Pretty social day. Three visitors. One was from a newspaper. Lucas Arian came over to tell me not to worry. And Carl Holt, he's an artist, an old friend. Wondered if there was anything he could do. Craig, is it going badly for me? There's nothing new to worry about, so don't try to find something. Will it ever be over? Darling, I know it's been a difficult two weeks for you. But tomorrow should see the end of the testimony. How does it look? Willis operates like a field marshal. He doesn't mind losing battles so long as he wins the war. He'll save his big ammunition for later. What can we do then? Oh, I've had several talks with Lou. He's very anxious to help you. I'm sure his evidence will add a lot of weight. And I think I'm going to let you testify, too. All right. Remember, once you're on the stand, Willis will try to cut you to ribbons. I'm not afraid of Willis or the judge or the jurors. All I'm afraid of is if things go wrong, I'd lose you. Oh, not a chance. Craig, beautiful. So I, I says, Joe, is there something wrong between you and Myra? And he said, I don't see how anything could be worse. Had you ever seen Joe Leeds before when he was quite angry? Yeah, a couple of times. As a matter of fact, he was quite upset the first time I ever saw him. Somebody accused him of giving a dishonest comp, tried to get him in trouble with the police. Well, Joe hurt him pretty bad. Then, Joe Leeds did have a bad temper when he was upset. Yeah, but that wasn't often. Mr. Kazarian, the night of Joe Leeds' death, did he seem normal to you or upset to you? Well, he was upset. He said he'd been doing a lot of thinking and had reached a big decision. Did he tell you what that decision was? No, except that what he had decided would change his whole life, and Myra's, too. That will be all, thank you. Darian, we come to that phone conversation Joe Lee had with his wife. Tell us exactly what you overheard. Well, that, that was a long time ago. Just tell us those things you can remember. Well, I remember him saying for her to stay home. He'd been doing a lot of thinking, wanted to talk it over with her, and well, I guess that's about all that happened. In other words, it was Joe Leeds who definitely had something to talk out with his wife. Well, that's the way it sounded. Now, Mr. Kazarian, the defense counsel has spoken much about Joe Leeds' temper. You say you were present when Joe Leeds beat up a man who falsely accused him. Now, would you say that Joe Leeds was quite angry then? Oh, the worst I've ever seen him. But, but this fellow had it coming to him. He was always sniping at Joe. And if Joe Leeds was more angry on that occasion than you ever saw him, why didn't he kill the man? Did uh, someone stop the fight? Oh, no. We were all glad to see him get it. Anyway, we knew all Joe had in mind was to rough him up. <laughs> he sure did a good job. And if Joe Leeds was more angered than you had ever seen him, you claim he had no intention of killing. Now, can you say on the oath that you've taken that he was angered enough to kill his wife? No, I guess not. Thank you, Mr. Gazarian. And do you recall any instance, Mrs. Leeds, where your husband displayed a violent temper? Yes. There was the time just before we were married. Joe had an argument with one of his employees. The two men fought. Joe beat him so brutally, the other man had to spend the next two months in the hospital. And were there times after your marriage when your husband showed a tendency toward violence? Several. Whenever anything annoyed him, edgy. If someone said something that displeased him, 
He flew into a temper. We argued often because of this. Then that night when he came home, wet, blind with fury, you had good reason to think he would kill you. You had good reason to think that Joe Leeds was a man of violence. That is what you believed, is it not, Mrs. Leeds? Yes. Do you think any other woman would have reacted as you did? I know they would. No one wants to kill, but no one wants to be killed either. Your witness. Mrs. Leeds. How long had you and your husband been married? Two years. And when you married your husband, what was your financial condition? I, I don't understand. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, were you rich, moderately wealthy, had a good job? What? Well, I, I was looking for a job when I met Joe Lee. And would you say your husband was a man of means? I mean, did he have some property, some insurance perhaps? He had ten supermarkets, some insurance. How much would you say your husband was worth at the time of his death? That is, including insurance. I don't know. Then let me tell you. Your husband, Mrs. Leeds, left an estate of more than three quarters of a million dollars. That's quite an inheritance for you. From unemployment to a neat $750,000 in two years. Wouldn't you say that was a very lucrative two years' work, Mrs. Leeds? Objection! The prosecution will refrain from any more questions of this nature. That last statement will be stricken from the record, and the jury is asked to disregard it. Ms. Leeds, when you married your husband, were you in love with him? Of course. Were you in love with your husband at the time of his death? No. Then in less than two years, you no longer loved him. Love is a very strong emotion, Mrs. Leeds. How could you turn it off so quickly? I, I just didn't love him anymore. And you waited until that fatal night to tell him about it? That's not true. Then when did you tell your husband you were no longer in love with him? I, I don't remember. Did you ask your husband for a divorce? Yes. And what was Mr. Leeds' answer? He just said he wanted to think about it. In other words, Mrs. Leeds, when you suddenly told your husband you wanted a divorce, instead of becoming angry, he answered he wanted to think about it. Now, is that correct? Yes. And yet you ask this court to believe that Mr. Leeds returned home on that fatal evening and without so much as a single word trying to kill you? Yes. Then tell us, Mrs. Leeds, how do you explain the fact that when you first, shall we say, shocked your husband by asking him for a divorce, he did nothing? I don't know. I, I don't know. That will be all, Mrs. Leeds. Myra Leeds would have us believe that when her husband reached their apartment, he immediately made an attempt to kill her, so that she had to kill in self-defense. But what concrete reasons have you been given that Mrs. Leeds felt she was forced to shoot her husband? Only that he became furious when she told him she no longer loved him, that she wanted a divorce. And why did Myra Leeds claim to want a divorce in the first place? Just that they were no longer in love. And yet... Not one single witness has been brought before this court to indicate that any discord existed between the leads. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there was no discord in the marriage of Joe Leeds. Only in that of his wife, Myra, an ambitious woman. Marriage had bettered her position. And with Joe Leeds' death, her position was still improved. The location of the body, the placement and trajectory of the bullet that killed Leeds, the lack of signs of a struggle. All of these facts, facts, fitted against Myra Leeds' story of self-defense. Could there be an honest doubt in your minds as to the guilt of this woman? Well, if there is, let me dispel them for you. Myra Leeds has given no reason why she would have wanted to divorce Joe Leeds, except that she fell out of love. Now. Is love such a fickle thing that one can fall in love one week and out the next? With no apparent reason, could Myra Leeds have awakened one morning 
and decided to ask her husband of two years for a divorce? No. Let me tell you what Myra Leeds did. She was jobless when she met Joe Leeds. She saw in him a stepping stone to an easy life. And when she was ready to move on, she realized that Joe Leeds could only be of monetary value to her dead. So that when he came home to discuss whatever it was he wished to discuss, she shot him. Myra Leeds shot and killed her husband for a handful of gold. That is why the state charges Myra Leeds with murder in the first degree. Is counsel for the defense ready to address the jury? I am, Your Honor. This has been a long and grueling trial, not only for the defendant, but for the rest of us as well. You have heard arguments and counter-arguments, facts and counter-facts, theory and counter-theory. And for the past hour and 15 minutes, you've heard the prosecution parade before you every piece of circumstantial evidence, innuendo and plain conjecture that he could muster. Conjecture that would bolster his claim that Myra Leeds is guilty of murdering her husband. With all of this conjecture, the end result has been this. The state claims Myra Leeds killed Joe Leeds because her story about the moments of violence she was faced with differed from that of the police. And because she could give no clear reason why she suddenly would want to divorce her husband. If Myra Leeds had a sound reason for suddenly desiring a divorce, a reason that would measurably add to her happiness. Even the prosecution knows it would have no case. Well, Myra Leeds did have a reason for asking Joe Leeds for a divorce. Myra Leeds was in love with another man. Right. Now remember, you of the jury are not here to determine the righteousness of Myra Leeds' emotions as a woman, only to determine if she shot her husband in an act of premeditation. It is not for you to decide whether or not Myra Leeds did the right thing in falling in love with another man. It is for you to decide if in telling her husband about the man she loved, she aroused in him an anger so intense he decided to kill her. So now you ask, who is this man? Bring him forward to confirm this story. Well, I knew Joe Lee better than anyone. And I know the man his wife is in love with. I am that man. Well, we seem to be off to a good start here. Uh, you know, I was kind of taken by that scene, you know, where Joe doesn't seem to be too broke up about finding out that his best friend is in love with his wife. He just seems so nonchalant about the whole thing. And Myra? I gotta tell you, you know, when they were holding her in jail awaiting trial, you know, all of a sudden, she didn't look too sexy when she was wearing that jail dress with, with, with the clogged shoes. Uh, far cry from how she looked earlier. Now, Craig, I, I, I just can't believe that he would just stand up in front of judge and jury and say, yeah, she's in love with me. You know, I, I was watching that, watching it, and I'm, I'm thinking... You know, would that even be legal? I mean, could you defend someone and represent someone as an attorney uh, when you had a, a familial relationship with, with the person you're defending? Maybe it's legal, but I don't know. I, I was still just kind of taken aback by it. Now, Raymond Burr, you know, playing Craig here, uh, he comes across here uh, as a very competent, authoritative lawyer. And in tonight's picture, it certainly set himself up for his later TV roles. 
Raymond Burr was, of course, the star. Uh, he was the star of uh, Perry Mason. It, it aired from 1957 to 1966, I believe it was. And then uh, also later on played uh, the starring role in Ironside. And that aired from 67 to 75. Uh, now in that one, he played uh, the role of a wheelchair-bound consultant for the San Francisco Police Department. So it was kind of neat to see him play a role here. And, and I'm sure there was no thought given to it at the time. But it certainly set himself up for those later iconic TV roles that we all know Raymond Burr best from. So, uh, well, let's go ahead and get back to Please Murder Me. Any further demonstration of this character in this courtroom will be clear. My falling in love with my release was accidental. But my wanting to marry her was with strong intent. As was Joe Leeds' intent when he decided if he could no longer have his wife, no other man would either. Ladies and gentlemen, there isn't a single one of you who wouldn't have struggled as my release did. Her life was at stake. She acted in self-defense. That is the story, and that is the truth. To bring out the truth, your verdict must be not guilty. She beat it. Not guilty. You know what gallery chair you thought Navy just made a touchdown. Awesome. Cool as winter. Didn't move a muscle when the jury foreman sang out. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. That guy's the biggest incentive murders had since the Chinese invented gunpowder. I wish you happiness. Thank you. Pick this up on the way back from court today. What is it? Capri. As ancient and enchanting as the Mediterranean would surround it. May not be the world's greatest prose, but it sounded good to me. It must be love. I thought we could be married next week, take the boat to Rome, then right to Capri. Oh, darling, it'll be a wonderful honeymoon. It sounds wonderful. But do you know next week is almost here? Give me a little bit more time. Mm, the sooner we get away, the better it'll be for you. From now on, you're not going to have any reason to think of anything else but me. giving you up. Well, I'm sorry I'm late, but Mom wasn't feeling well, and last minute she decided to stay home. Oh, that's too bad. Well, let me hang up your coat. No, thanks. And, and Myra, I'm awfully glad everything turned out okay. Thanks. Hey, this is supposed to be a happier case. Could I talk to you alone for a minute, Greg? Something wrong? It's about Joe. Sure, let's go into the den. Hi, Will. Hello, Henry. Good to see you, Lou. What is it, Lou? Uh, it's about Joe and the last night he was alive, the, the night my daughter was married and I dropped by to tell him about the wedding. Well, just before I left, he asked me to mail a letter for him. I put it in my pocket and, well, I forgot all about it until I put my tux on again this tonight. It's addressed to you. Dear Craig, well, like I promised, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I've been trying to figure out the best way for all of us. You see, when I first met Myra, I figured she was out of my league. She was interested in things that I didn't understand, like art, music. But then, like a boat, one night she told me she loved me and I felt nine feet tall. 
Right then I said a million thanks. In a way, it's like the answer to a prayer. We got married right away, and for a couple of months, living was paradise. I didn't love her. I worshipped her. But it began to change. One day, we had an argument. Myra told me she'd never loved me. It goes without saying, Craig, that I walked in circles for days. Finally, I asked her if she wanted a divorce, and she said yes, and asked for half my business. I got mad because I realized that was the only reason she'd ever married me. I told her that no man was going to live off what it had taken me most to accumulate. And that's the way it's been going along for the past few months. Myra's love, Fred, not with you. She's in love with some kind of an artist. I can't figure out what she's doing with you, but I know she must have some kind of a plan. I'm going to see her tonight. I'm going to try to keep her. She's no good, Greg, but I do love her. If she decides not to stay with me, I, I wanted you to know the truth. She is a woman. Myra is a disease. In a way, she's already destroyed me. I just hope she doesn't end up destroying you. trouble by forgetting about the letter? I don't know. I don't know. Give me a couple of days to think about it. I never wanted to hurt Joe. I didn't think I was possibly fool enough to say what But I had. Why did he try to kill me? Why couldn't he have I'm not afraid of women or the judge or the jurors. Well, I'm afraid of it. Things go wrong, I'd lose you. Myra Lee shot and killed her husband for a handful of gold. That is why the state charges Myra Leeds with murder in the first degree. Carlos was an artist, an old friend. Wondered if there was anything he could do. Strange. 
strange engagement? Marriage in between? Well, that was Myra's one big mistake. We both knew that shortly after she married that fellow. Hey, you don't mind if I work while we talk, do you? I want to make the most of the sunlight. Go right ahead. You say Myra knew she made a mistake when she married Joe Lee? People chase different rainbows, Mr. Carlson. Myra was money. I didn't have any. My prospects were terrible. Terrible. Well, we had a scrap on that subject when she met this lead fellow. You know the rest of the story. No, not the point about her knowing she made a mistake. No, that was when we uh, met at that exhibit that afternoon. The powder was still dry. At this juncture, I'd like to make a point of honor, Mr. Carlson. I refused to see Myra again after that afternoon. So she was free. She felt the same way about it. Well, an impasse, wasn't it? We didn't think so. I was going to ask Lee's for a divorce. I guess she went sort of crazy. That awful night was the capper. You know, Holt, you've been a lot working against you. In spite of that, I still may get to like you. I want you to, but what have I got working against me? Myra's trial? Why didn't you offer to help? I did. That day I visited Myra. She didn't want me to come to see her again, though. Or even say I knew her. Honey, I couldn't quite figure that out. I guess it was because she was afraid our being in love would sway the jury against her since she was a married woman. Funny, it was that very approach that freed her. That's what makes a lawyer a lawyer. You're just plain smart. Not always. Well, now, I watch that trial every single day, and you never drew a miss. By the way, I would like a crack at improving your impression of me. You got any ideas? Oh, my first sense was right. I do like it. Well, let's be really classical about this friendship, then. Toast it some sherry. Fling the glass in the fireplace. I'm sorry, but I've got to go. Oh, too bad. But as far as the toast is concerned, it's just as well. I'm going to fireplace. I will see you again, though. You know, that last day of the trial, when you said you were the man in Myra's life, I didn't think so kindly of you then. Glad Myra straightened me out on it. Oh? What did she say? Well, that it was a piece of courtroom strategy. Well, it sure was a beaut. That was the best piece of dramatics I've ever seen. Myra and I really owe you an awful lot, crawling out on a limb like that. Well, goodbye, Mr. Holt. Goodbye, Mr. Carlton. Darling, I was expecting you. Be ready in three minutes. In the meantime, how about making one of your very special Manhattan? I'm not quite sure I know how to make a Manhattan. Crazy. Me. I was expecting a friend. Who knows how to make special Manhattan? That's right. If you like, I can... No, thanks. I just wanted to talk to you, Myra, about our engagement. Let's not make it tonight, please. Why not tonight? Why not this very minute? Two people in love can't wait, Myra. That's the way with people in love, isn't it? Explain, Craig. Someone... Well, isn't it? Say it, Myra. Say you love me. Say you're hopelessly, irretrievably in love with me. Let go of me. I want to hear you say it, Myra. I'm all you have. Or have you suddenly remembered there was someone else? I said let go of me. Someone like Carl Holt. All right. You know. I met him today. He seems very much in love. Two men in love with you. Awkward arrangement, Myra. Craig, what happened to us? It was a mistake. I don't think so. In fact, I don't think you ever made a mistake before in your life. I don't want to see him, Craig. Neither do I. Just the truth. The truth is I am in love with Carl. And I'm going to marry him. 
And you were in love with Carl Holt, and you were going to marry him the day I met you. I don't want to talk about it. Then let's have someone talk about it for us. I received this letter yesterday from Joe. What kind of a trick is this? Sit down, Myra. Sit down. Dear Craig, like I promised, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I've been trying to figure out the best way for all of us. You see, when I first met Myra, I figured she was out of my league. She was interested in things I didn't understand, like art and music. Myra is in love, Craig, but not with you. She's in love with some kind of an artist. I can't figure out what she's doing to you, but I know she must have some kind of a plan. I'm going to see her tonight, and I'm going to try and keep her. She's no good, Craig, but I do love her. And if she decides not to stay with me, I wanted you to know the truth. She isn't a woman. Myra's a disease. The way she's already destroyed me, I just hope she doesn't end up destroying you. Joe. I don't believe Joe wrote that letter. You should be able to recognize his writing. What does it prove? Only that Joe was a miserable, jealous man? No, Myra, it proves something much different. Joe offered you a divorce, but without any money. You didn't want it that way, and you knew there was only one way to get it. You'll have to do more than say it. You'll have to prove it. I'm free now. I can do what I want with my life. You had it planned very carefully, didn't you, Myra? To get Joe's money, you had to kill him. To guarantee your freedom, you made me fall in love with I wonder if Carl Holt would want a murderess for a wife. I was tried and acquitted. Your brilliant defense freed me. No one can hurt me anymore. Not even you. This time you're wrong, Myra. Very wrong. What do you mean, this time? You're going to commit another murder. Don't yes, you are. You're going to murder me. You're insane. No one wants to die, not even you. My whole life has meant just three things. My love for Joe, my work, and my love for you. You've destroyed them all. How much is there left of me? There it was, Ray. An ugly little package. Myra had killed Joe Lee, and I was an exception. Joe Lee was dead. And Myra had the choice. Just as I'm going to say. There's not much time left, so I'd better bring you up to date. I had made plans to give up my practice spending every available moment keeping Myra constantly aware that sooner or later I proved to Carl Holt she was a murderer. Then I learned that Myra and Carl were planning to leave for Europe. Ray, good to see you again. Come on in. Hey, we were just about to have a drink. Join us? Are you sure you're surprised, Craig? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Oh, just a private little joke. Myra is certain attorneys know what people are going to do before they do it. In some cases, I'd say she was right. Not talk about lawyers. I've got news for you. Oh? Just tell me. No, I, I, I don't think you'd be interested. Of course I'd be interested. We're going to get married? No. Surprised again, Craig? We're sailing for Paris on Friday. We're going to be married to get there, and it was all Myra's idea. She wants to live there. In a way, I'm sorry. Sorry? For? Well, this wasn't exactly a social visit. I came up with permission of painting. Painting? For whom? Myself. I know this is going to sound a little vain, but I've always wanted a portrait. You know, something very flattering. 
Oh, it's a shame you didn't mention it before. We sail on Friday. Well, how long does it take to do it? Well, that varies. I, I usually like two, three weeks. Well, couldn't you put your trip off for that length of time? No. I like your work, Carl. I'd be willing to pay as much as $2,500. Perry, I'm not a whistler, you know. What about it? $2,500 for those two weeks. We don't need it. We have plenty. Now, hold on, honey. I mean, you have plenty. You're my husband. What I have belongs to you. Well, I am afraid where money is concerned, I'm going to be a little old-fashioned. When can you make the sitting? What about tomorrow? That's fine. Between three and five, that's my life. Good, I'll be here. Two weeks. Give us a chance to get very well acquainted. I'm looking forward to it. So am I. Elmira, seems as if you're one weakness in picking men with moral strength. <laughs> well, I'll see you tomorrow. Come well, on, Greg. Not quite as soon. Leave us alone, Craig. Don't push me too far. Is that all you came here for? I came to offer you $100,000. Will you take it? Let him go to Paris? No. $125,000? Not for all the money in the world. I need those two weeks. I need the time to finish what I've started. I promise you, Myra, you're not going to have Carl Holt or Joe Lee. I never realized how much I could hate a man. No, that's not enough to do it. Not yet. What kind of a man? One who believes in the honesty and integrity of our court. But that's something you would never be able to understand. I understand what you're trying to do. Do you really? Do you understand what you did to me when I learned you killed Joe? Do you understand in winning you an acquittal, I became as guilty as you? I want you to understand, Myra. I want you to fully understand that we'll have to pay for what we've done. I'm not going to pay for anything. You pay, my We we'll both pay. That's it. Better or for worse? Excellent. It's been a very patient subject. Oh, don't forget tonight. I'll be on room about seven. Craig? How many times you've seen Myra here? How nervous and jumpy she seems. The trial was very taxing for her, and I guess she's anxious to get to Europe. It's a natural reaction. I think you should have any worries, darling. I guess not. Maybe your party will be just a prescription that'll snap her out of it. By the way, what are we celebrating? You'll find out in exactly three hours. Okay, man of mystery. I will not press you for an answer. I'll stay on tenor. I'll see you soon. What, Carl, let's leave. Oh, leave? We could give a message to the captain, have him tell Greg that something had come up. We can't do that. You know that Greg has been counting on us. He's looking forward to it. Well, what's so important about it? We'll talk about that after dinner, Myra. Hello, Charles. Good evening, Mr. Carlson. Hi, Greg. For dessert, may I suggest cherry jubilee? It's excellent. Oh, thank you. How about you, Myra? 
That'd be all, Charles. Well, Craig, that was a delicious dinner. French food couldn't be any better. All right. Do you enjoy your dinner? You told us you'd tell us what this was all about after dinner, Craig. I uh, Oh, it's all right. She's just anxious. What do you mean, anxious? A trip to Paris, and she's about to become a bride. Craig, I want to know why you brought us here. All right. Here you are, Carl. Craig, our deal was for 2500 I thought I'd double it. That's my surprise. But why? By helping me achieve an important ambition. Well, I... I certainly hope through the years the painting continues to please you, Craig. I'm certain it will. You see... To me, the portrait reflected... Not only a friendship, but a great understanding you felt for the subject. I hope you're never disappointed. Well, I must run. I have a lot of work to do at the house. You know that one important case you mentioned? That's the one. Thank you for coming, Myra. We will see you again before we leave. Yes, you will. By the way, Carl, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. Suppose the portrait of me had turned out badly. Suppose you'd realized you'd made a mistake in the manner in which you'd handled it. What would you have done? Destroyed it, of course. Despite your fee? Despite anything. Strange. I've always felt that the same parallel existed in law. Well, I, I've got to be going. Good night. Night, Craig. I can't tell you how good it's been having dinner here with you, Craig. Wish we could do it more often. Ray, there's something I want to ask you. Shoot. About the Myra Leeds trial. Oh, my. Why well, talk over yesterday's headlines? You asked the jury to find Myra guilty of first-degree murder. Hmm. At the end of the trial, the jury found her not guilty. How did you find her? It's important to me, Ray. I want to know. All right, Craig. You were very convincing. I can understand you were swaying that jury, but you didn't sway me. At the time, I still thought she was guilty. I was sure you did. You know, I thought about it for a long time. Now I know that the, the jury brought in the correct verdict. I've known you too many years, Craig. You never would have said what you did just for the dramatic effect. Another attorney might, but not you. No, I admit it. Uh, on the Myra Leeds case, I was way off base. Well, thank you, Ray. Now, there's something I'd like you to do for me. Hello, Mrs. Leeds. Mr. Carlson's expecting you. Thank you, Jenny. Leeds? Mr. Willis? Myra? And you could make it. Now, it's getting late. I'd better leave. It was a wonderful evening. Thanks for the talk, Ray. You've been very helpful. Ms. Leeds? Why did you send for me? Why were you talking to the district attorney? We were talking about a case. Your case, Myra. This grotesque joke of yours has gone far enough. You still think this is a joke? You've got to stop it, Craig. Every time you talk to Carl, I... The other evening at dinner, I was terrified. What you're doing is inhuman. 
I can't stand much more of it. You're a murderess, Myra. Anything that happens to you won't be enough. Craig, the jury freed me. They found me innocent. All I want is to go away with Carl. Please understand, for the first time in my life, I want to live decently. You don't know the meaning of the word. At first, I thought Carl Holt was like you. But it wasn't long before I changed my mind. You fooled him, Myra. Just like you fooled me. He's too fine to be hurt by someone like you. I'm not going to let it happen. No matter what you tell him, he won't believe you. There's no way of proving that I killed Joe. You're just trying to frighten me with more threats. Understand me, Myra. I never once meant to threaten you. I made you a promise. What I've compiled in this folder is no longer theory, it's proof. And the only way you can prevent me from turning it over to Carl is to kill me. I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to kill you! It must be maddening to know that in just a little while you're going to lose everything you've planned and killed for. You see, Myra, you can't win anymore. It was not long before my telephone began to ring. I knew it would be Myra. She was desperate. She wanted to see me right away, but I still had a few things to do, so I told her I'd see her later at my office. I made the appointment for 12.30 sharp. It was now only a matter of waiting. Time took care of the wait. So now the pattern's complete, and it's the same pattern Joe Leeds lived. But this time, Myra won't be acquitted. That's where you're concerned, Ray. Because this time, you're not going to have to guess whether or not Myra is guilty. You'll know. You're going to be a witness. get you off, not even me. I told you, I can't be tried for the same crime twice. And I told you, I'm trying you before Carl Holt. We'll let him determine whether or not you're guilty. Or would you prefer this? I'm not going to kill anyone. Very well. That affords three of us a visit. Carl, you, and us. I'm going to call and ask him to come right over. After seeing this, if he still wants to marry a murderess, that's his business. Craig, don't call him. Craig! Don't make me do it!
leads. Uh... Uh, Terrell, Craig has committed suicide. What are you doing here? He asked if I could meet him here at 12.30. Strange. Told me to be here at 12.40. Well, I... I'd never expect Craig to do a thing like this. Ray Willis. Man shot himself. Will you send someone over right away, please? Uh, Chambers Building, room 2407. No. He's dead. an explanation. We see that the entire time, Myra was actually in love with an artist. So that's why she married Joe for his money. Yeah, <laughs> she knows she's not going to get that from some dead broke starving artist. But in the end, Craig ends up ensnaring her with a running tape recorder. Now, uh, you probably saw in tonight's film, uh, and this was as good a cut as I could find, but there are already the beginnings of degradation in the quality of the film. You know, there's places where the lines are running through it, you know, some light spots. Uh, but let's remember, you know, these films, they're a lot like me. They're not getting any younger either. So it's best that we enjoy these treasures before they're completely lost to time. And as tonight's film starred Angela Lansbury and Raymond Burr, I felt that it was still worth the showing. Now, Peter Godfrey that directed tonight's film, uh, he had a long history through, uh, through film uh, from the 1930s through the 1950s, started off in Great Britain. That's where Peter Godfrey is from. Um, both acting and directing, but most of his directing work came in the 1940s. And he directed films with uh, uh, famous actors and actresses like uh, Mickey Rooney, Ida Lupino. In 1949, he directed 
The Girl from Jones Beach, starring Virginia Mayo and Ronald Reagan, well before his U.S. presidency. But uh, it seems like the, the one actress that he worked with the most was Barbara Stanwyck. At the time, they were both working for Warner Brothers, so it makes sense that their paths should cross. And they did for three films. In 1947, he directed Cry Wolf, starring Barbara and Errol Flynn. He also did uh, The Two Mrs. Carols with Barbara and Humphrey Bogart. But he's probably best remembered for the 1945 holiday classic, Christmas in Connecticut with Barbara and Dennis Morgan. Well, I thank you for spending the evening with us here at Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time. Thank you.